Okay, welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, we are just going to casually conversate about muscle soreness and what was the worst case of muscle soreness you've ever experienced. So for me personally, I think the worst soreness I've ever experienced in my life, I was probably around 13 years old and my buddy had a little bench press and me and my friends and my brother got this great idea and we we're like, hey, let's see if we can do a hundred reps. Keep in mind, we didn't work out at this time. None of us did. I, I was around 13, 15. I, I can't remember. I, I was a teenager. And then we we're like, let's see how many reps we could do. I think we did 200 reps on the bench press with, I think a hundred pounds or something. And then we did like a hundred, 150 reps of curls, like 50 pounds. I can't remember the weights so of such a long time ago, but all I know is we banged out those freaking curls and that bench press so much. And then I go home and my, my dad was into fitness. So I say, like, Hey, my dad has protein powder. We should take some of that. So we're not sore the next day. So we, we go to my dad. I'm like, Hey, can we have some protein? Cause we just had a really hard workout and, and you know, we need it so we don't get sore. And he's like, yeah, it doesn't work like that. We're like, yeah, it does. I read the magazines. So he was like, okay, I'm going to give you some but not a full scoop because you don't need a full scoop. Really, he just didn't want to give me any and my friends because he'll stingy you with it and he didn't want to waste it on us, which now looking back, I, I can understand why he did this. So he takes a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a flat level teaspoon and puts just a little bit amount in a glass for each of us, mixes it up. He goes, that's all you'll need. That should do the trick. So we all drink it down thinking like, okay, cool, cool, cool. The next day, we're good. Like, man, that protein, it, it worked, man. I'm not sore at all. The next day, oh, my God. It felt like your arms were falling off. Your My pecs, my chest, my arms, everything hurt so bad. I could barely even move anything. It hurt so incredibly bad. I think I was sore for like a week and a half. It wasn't like no two-day, three-day recovery. Like, it hurt so bad. Every time I moved my arms, it felt like stuff was ripping. And that's the moment I realized, okay, I might have, instead of pushing to muscle failure, I think I pushed to muscle foobar because it, it was brutal. What about you guys? What's one of the, one of your worst experiences of being sore? So you, you took my story that I was thinking of because I was thinking of the same exact story. But uh, at another point in time that I can think of, we did uh, the, what's it called? Like when we stood against the wall and we decided to let each other punch each other in the stomach like that was another horribly bad idea but mm -hmm. oh yeah i remember that like, we just we went rounds doing that or whatever till the one person went down mm -hmm. uh okay and, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me paint the picture there was about 10 or 12 of us and we were all drinking we were teenagers we were young and then i got the wild hair idea like man i wonder what it feels like to be punched in the stomach standing against the wall as hard as someone can punch you so we all get this great idea hey everybody line up and it hit me in the stomach. But if you hit me, I get to hit you. So then we all took a shot on me, and then we would all take a shot on the next guy over, and until we all started dropping one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, until we're all just falling over. And that that's what he's talking about, just young, dumb, boy, teenager stuff that just for no reason. And then we started trying to pick each other up. I'll let you take over the story again. I just want to paint the picture for the people listening but, with how ridiculous this was what we did. Yeah, we had what we had the one kid, uh, one of the twins that tried to back out when it was his turn or whatever, and he's like, no, nah, I'm done. And he's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, you get against that wall, we're all going to kick the crap out of you. <laughs> You, you got to hit each and every one of us. You're going to take your lick at the very end. But, yeah, uh, what, we, we did that, and at the end of the night, it was fine. Everything was okay. We went to sleep, and then the next morning, it just felt like you had the, you'd done the most brutal ab routine <laughs> ever. And it was, like You just wanted to stay curled up in a ball because stretching out just hurt so bad. Yeah, well, and then, like, on top of that, like I said, we got the idea to start trying to pick each other up off the ground, like, dead weight, and squat each other. So it wasn't just the stomachs, but it was a bunch of other dumb stuff that we did that night. And that, that was a pretty brutal next day, next couple of days, actually, too. Yeah. W what about you? For me, I don't really have any that I can remember as a kid because I was so active. I, I really can't remember a time where I was, like, really sore. But I do as an adult. It was when I first started coaching – tumbling and trying to trying to like 
hold up some body weights of some high school kids. I mean, I it was kids of all ages from 3 to like 17 years old trying to like prevent them from falling on their head, trying to teach them how to do backflips and stuff. Twisting and turning and trying to hold weight up with one arm. I didn't realize I had muscles in places that I have muscles. And I was so sore from that. How long were you sore for? Uh, a good week, I would say. So I figured it would have been whenever you were younger and got into cheerleading and gymnastics. Because I know they make you do like 500 sit-ups and crunches and stuff like that. I figured you would have been had more soreness from those competitive days than from that. That's so why I said I can't remember back then because it was just like nature. Like it was just... I did it all the time, so I I can't remember the time of when the first day, maybe because I was just so young. Yeah, so so that was the first experience I've ever had for muscle soreness from working out. Now, that was before I even got into working out. Now, I've also had FUBAR muscle failure from like like going beyond failure to muscle FUBAR where I was in the gym, like first time ever going to a commercial gym. Uh, You and me did this. We we went into 24-hour fitness, and it was like, hey, can can we just walk around and check the gym out? And, of course, the staff was there, and they're like, yeah, absolutely, go yeah, ahead. It, it was late at night, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was 24 hours. So I think it was around 11, 12 o'clock at night, and there wasn't no one there, and the night shift didn't care. So we went in there, and they were like, oh, this is cool. Hey, do you think they would notice if I did this? I'll probably not. just try it, just try it. So at that given moment, whenever we realized the staff didn't care, we literally did every single piece of equipment in that gym. And this is one of the big 24 hour fitnesses, like the monster 24 hour fitnesses that has like, they have like a plate loaded preacher curl bench. They have a cable preacher curl bench. They have a, um, a actual free weight preacher curl bench. And then they have like another preacher curl bench. That's like machine. Like they, they have so many of all the same thing. They have three different uh, Smith machines, like multiple different of the same benches, and we legitimately did like three or four sets of every single thing in that gym because we thought, what if this is the only time we ever get to come in here and do this? So we just annihilated ourselves. Now, I was working out at my house, and now I, I grew up not rich, but pretty poor. So we had some of those old school plastic covered concrete sand weights. And uh, a little bitty rickety bench and stuff like that, but we made the most of it. And so I had some type of working out under my belt, but it was far from anything amazing. So I thought, like, I got this. Well, come the next, like, five days after the initial two days after that workout, man, I could barely move. My whole body hurt so bad. Like, that was another time that I went past muscle failure to muscle foobar. So that was, that was pretty brutal. What about you? Do, you? do you have any other memories? Of- Basically, don't get you guys together because I'll do some stupid stuff. Yeah, we do some pretty stupid <laughs> stuff. But we're older now, so now we just, you know. Still do stupid stuff? Yeah, but we play it off as like, you know, let's experiment. Experimentation. <laughs> Back then, it was just crazy ideas like, hey, what if we this or what if we that? Yeah, we, we went. <laughs> yeah. It was just yeah. random things that we did. <laughs> Like, like I said, the punching each other in the stomach thing was a dumb idea. And looking at it, like looking back at it now, it's like, why, like, why? <laughs> well, I remember another time but, you were sore. I remember another time you were sore. Whenever it wasn't about working out, though, is whenever we were at Jeremy's house. You know, see if you remember it, you could tell the story. We're at Jeremy's house. We're all drinking. We used to skateboard. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, I rolled off the roof though. <laughs> yeah, it, you you tried to ollie off the roof. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Until you slipped, and then you just straight landed on your rear end right on the freaking grass, and you broke your tailbone? Or did yeah, you bruise I, it? I don't know what I did. It just hurt really bad. I know that. Yeah, you waddled like a duck for a uh, week. But, hell, I, I think even worse than that was like with the night before with the drinking and uh, ending up freaking dry heaving all the next day. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And ending up with, like again, sore, sore, sore abs, just yeah. wishing something would come out. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, uh, was it involuntary abdominal work? You know? <laughs> yeah, I felt like I should have had abs my whole entire pregnancy. Then, man, if you could flex your abs like that and that dry heave whenever you're in the middle of a heavy squat or deadlift, your abdominal would be so rigid. If you could just mimic that that yak whenever you're like in the middle of a, a dry heave. So, let's change that so okay, so another time where I trained past failure to foobar. Um, whenever I actually got my gym membership to 24 hour fitness, this is probably like a year or two later after that incident, I started working out and I didn't really know. Like I said, I, I was 
followed the magazines and stuff like that and read what, but I didn't really know what I, what I was doing. So I got in there. It's my first time to ever actually get to train my legs. Cause you know, all you, all I had was like a bench press that had a little leg extension, leg curl attachment on the end of it. There wasn't nothing really that I had besides the lunges and I would do lunges from time to time. So basically I didn't know about Romanian deadlifts or barbell, you know, like dumbbell deadlifts and, you know, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, but like goblet squats and all those little exercises you could do for your legs. Like I didn't know about any of those. So whenever I went to the gym, my experience of leg training was basically leg extensions, leg curls, and that was it. And then maybe some lunges. So when I had the access to a squat rack, I was just like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. So I squatted and squatted and squat. And I wasn't squatting a lot of weight. Keep in mind, I was young. I didn't have any developed legs, but I did so many squats, leg presses and hack squats because I never got to do them before. And I just fell in love with them. So I was just sitting there in the squat rack for probably 10 sets. And then I moved to the hack squats and the leg press when I finally decided, okay, that's good. And I went to go walk off. I won't ever forget this bless this lady's heart. I'm walking back to the restrooms where all the cardio equipment's at and I'm going, my legs are just so jelloy. Like I could barely walk. My legs were just trembling horribly. And I drove a standard. I still have a manual transmission to this day, but still I had a manual transmission truck and, and I'm walking back, walking back, walking back. And next thing I know, my leg starts buckling. I'm like, Oh no, I'm going down. And that, that older lady was right coming like directly next to me. And I just reached out and grabbed one to her because my legs completely gave out and buckled. And I drug her down to the ground with me and, uh, she didn't get mad. She didn't get upset. She didn't yell. She was like, Oh my goodness. She was like, I guess you had a hard workout. And she just chuckled about it. She was super cool. Helped me back up. I was like, yeah. She was like, do you need help? I was like, yeah, just give me to the wall and I could go from there. So she helped me to the wall and I waddled my weight and wiggled her around all the way to the bathroom. I sat down for like 25, 30 minutes before my legs would stop trembling enough where I could walk out to the vehicle to drive home. And that was the hardest I've ever experienced a clutch to push in. Like how hard it was to clutch, push that clutch in again for the next couple days, I couldn't move my legs. It hurts so bad. Yeah. And like our old, um, when we used to work out at the gym, some, for some reason they put everything upstairs. So after a really, really Mm -hmm. intense leg day, trying to get down those stairs. I remember a lot of trembling and holding on to the rails to not fall down. Yeah, and, and I've had a lot of kids come up. I say kids, you know, I was young too back then, but whenever I was already training for like four or five years and I was in my early 20s and I was actually was more experienced and knew how to structure a program and diet and everything, I'd have friends and coworkers that want to come and work out and they would be like, hey, I want to work out with you. I'm like, yeah, come on, man. And like, I'm going to do what you do. It's like, nah, no, no, no. You need to just start off doing like maybe one, two sets of air. No, I'm going to do what you do. Uh, and I've always said this on this channel. I don't know if you guys are new viewers, but I'm a volume junkie. I've always loved doing like four to five sets of eight to 15 reps of everything I do. Some things I take up to uh, 20 reps and I will do four or five different exercises. So in one set, in one workout, I can do anything between 12 to 25 sets for one body part. I, I just love volume. So whenever these, these kids, when my friends or coworkers would come in, they're like, no, I'm going to train. No, 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 no. Just start. But then they want to keep up with me. So then they either try to do the same load that I'm training with. It's like, dude, you're not going to be able to handle this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the same reps and sets you are, just go lighter. You shouldn't go that much. And they do it. And almost every single time, halfway through the training program, they would throw up. They'd have to stop to go run to the restroom or run to the nearest trash can. they throw up. And they come back and be like, I'm done. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I kind of figured. And then they would never come back. And if they would come back, they'd come back until the soreness kicked in like two days later. And then they would never come back. And I could have probably done a better job of talking them out of wanting to do what I did. But I figured, you know what, this is a good learning lesson. And I've been here and I've done it. So it didn't break me. So if you really want this, you'll recover from this horrible workout that you're about to experience and then come back and train again. But chances, more, more than often, they never come back. So I always try to encourage people whenever they're first starting off, like just start off with one set of two, three different exercises and then do two sets the next time and then do three sets and then maybe add an exercise and just slowly build into it. And that's, I, I preach that now, but when I was younger, I tried to explain that to my, my peers when they would work out with me, but half the time the ego kicks in. Like if you could do it, I can do it. Nah, I've been doing this for like five years, man. You've been doing this since never. So maybe you should start it. No, I got it. Okay. Well, I got you, bro. Come on. We got this. 
Yeah, another good time I remember is when we all went, when we went camping as a family to Big Bend National Park, and we were going to do a lot of hiking. Mm-hmm. And our youngest at the time was still like an infant. Or, oh, what was he? Like? He was a. He was around one. He was an early toddler. Yeah. So he could walk, but not very good. So with hiking included me and you taking turns carrying him up and down, up and down all the hiking. I remember being very sore from that too. Yeah, we we went hiking in the canyons. And at the time we didn't realize it, but the canyons in Big Bend, it's like you could have up to like 13 inch steps. And then they're like maybe like four foot, five foot in the next step. And they can range from like three inches up to like, like I said, 12, 13, 14 inches. And a lot of them are pretty like back to back to back to back to back. And you climb all the way up these, uh, these staircase that's just like makeshift out the side of the canyon. And we didn't realize it at the time because it was our first time hiking in that area. And we were carrying this like, like, well, he was born in June. And I think at that time it was in November. So it was about a one and a half roughly. He was a little under yeah. one and a half. So we're carrying this like 30 pound butterball, <laughs> like everywhere because he couldn't keep up he's too young and man yeah the, the soreness that kicked in like it, it was pretty bad because at that time i wasn't really working out either so like my arms and my shoulders hurt so bad from carrying him i mean and it's like dead weight too because he's at that age where he doesn't really help he's just like okay hold me limp noodle so and hiking at the same time mm-hmm. was a lot but it was fun yeah have, have y'all ever worked out and seized up from cramping or had severe cramps during working out that's what I was about to ask. Like, just like, cause hand and if you're working out and you end up with doing like having severe muscle soreness, muscle cramps usually come with it as well. And I was wondering, like, what's like, what do you think is the worst type of muscle cramp? Like, what body part do you think is just like the most horrible for for muscle cramping? Because for me, it's it's the calves, and it always seems to hit you the worst when you're asleep. Like that middle of the night, and all of a sudden your calf seizes up and it wakes you up, and you're like, ah. <laughs> Just hoping that it lets go kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think probably the worst cramps I experience is either my hamstrings or my forearms. I, I get my forearms will cramp up horrible. My hand will go into like this little deformed claw, you know. But I've been fortunate. I haven't really ever had any major calf cramps or like a back or ab cramps. And so every now and then I've experienced the ab cramp. But I think the worst cramps I've ever experienced is probably my forearms because whenever they lock up, it'll lock my whole entire arm up and my hand just does this little weird retracted like claw. And it, and it there's nothing I could do except for try to straighten up my fingers and my arm. And even then it's just like, no, we're going to stay like this for a while and just hurt. And even after I straighten it back out, it still hurts like crap, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I have experienced cramping during workouts. But, like, uh, man, I, I think probably a foot cramp is pretty brutal whenever you're working out. I don't know if you ever experienced a foot cramp working out whenever the muscles in the feet lock up. Yeah, I did. Like, I had one, I think, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's pretty. That's a pretty nasty cramp and stuff. The only time I've really had a foot cramp is when we were going off roading and holding in the clutch for so long. Like, so, like, you know, I have to, like... Mm-hmm. But other than that, no. Well, getting super sore in the gym than trying to do activities outside the gym afterwards, that's always a uh, – it makes for an interesting time of realizing how much you actually use. Oh, here's another time I trained my body part beyond failure. Um, so the first time I ever got a hold of a hip adductor, hip adductor machine, you know, when you squeeze your legs in. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, so, so I did the ones outward, and I was like, oh, that's easy. So I started doing the one where you squeeze your legs together. And I, at the time, I was a ego lifter, so I was squatting, like quarter repping, right? Keep in mind, I was young. I was doing quarter reps with like 405, well, maybe half reps, maybe not quarter reps, but like half reps with 405. And then I was leg pressing like 18, 1900 pounds. Now those, I got a pretty good full range of motion on because the way the sled was, there wasn't a huge range of motion. Like you could only bend your knees so far before your thighs were in your stomach and you couldn't go any further down. So I was capable of like loading up quite a bit of weight. So I I thought I was a pretty strong kid and I was just like, yeah, I mean, I got this. I'm, I'm tough as you, I'm tough as nails. So I go get on this little machine that you squeeze your, your legs together. I start off with 40 pounds. The stack goes up to 300. I'm, I'm just slamming it. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, this is easy. Let's put the stack up to 100. Bam, bam. I kept doing this all the way up to 300 pounds. And I'm doing like sets of 15 just this. 
annihilating this machine, not realizing this machine was annihilating my inner thighs, and I was just going to town on it. It's like, easy, easy, this is easy all day, all day, all day, you know? I used to people do that all the time at the gym on that machine. They think it's going nothing. Carry the boats. And I know the next couple of days they were hurting. Yeah. Because they load it up, and I'm like, I don't think they realize how intense that thing is going to be, but they're going to find out real quick. In your David Goggins mode. Yeah, who's going to carry the boats and the log? Yeah. That 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 you don't know does me. give me a lot of soreness actually in my like yeah. but but hip area. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't know me, son. But yeah, no, it, it does. It mm-hmm. it 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 will light you up. So anyway, so I'm sitting there slamming it, just like you know. I had like some some other peers in the gym. I had my gym bros, and we worked out occasionally. Every now and then, they would jump in with me with my workouts. I never jumped in with anyone else in their workouts. Not to oh, sound okay, cocky. So cool. Well, no, I'm not saying <laughs> trying to sound cocky, right? but I was always on a program, right? I I never just went where the wind blew. I always had a very structured program. Once I learned how to program, so a lot of my gym bros would they they their partners wouldn't show up. So then they would ask me, "Hey, what do you train tonight?" Oh, hey, I'm training that too tonight. Is it cool if I jump on you? Yeah, come on. So they'd work out with me. So I I had quite a few gym bros and stuff like that. So whenever we would all get together sometimes four or five of us to get together and train and i know it made for a very long night but those are the nights that you're really just there just to kind of like outperform each other who's the strongest who could do the more reps who yeah. could do so it was one of those nights so like i said and, and i'm just sitting there banging them and banging them and banging them and banging them thinking that like i'm you know like i'm something special Whew, man two days later i did not realize how much your groin and inner thighs you use day to day Walking, standing, sitting. I'm trying to get to sit on the oh. toilet. Yes, yeah. yes. The, using the restroom when you blast your thighs with that for the first time, it is so horrendous. Anything, anything you do, you realize exactly how much your inner thighs are used for every little thing mm-hmm. in life for moving. And then it kind of makes you wonder if I use these muscles this much. How are they so incredibly sore and they're not stronger than this? This doesn't make any sense. Then, of course, it deterred me from wanting to ever use that thing again. But fast forward a couple months, me and all my gym bros are together again. They're like, hey, let's do something crazy tonight. So we came up with some wild hair program. And we we all picked the exercise to do, and the whole con- the whole concept was you go to ham who could do the most reps and who could do the most weight you know reps and weights. So we all do like little mini competitions, and we just went to absolute town on those little machines and just oddball machines that we wouldn't ever really use, and it just would annihilate us. And it was just looking back, you know, it's like it's it's it was fun times, and I I know like. You know, a lot of these things I did probably wasn't smart and it probably didn't help my longevity, but it was a lot of fun and I had a lot of laughs and I wouldn't trade any of them going back. You know, I I, I would, I, I just, I, I laugh inside every time I think about these stupid moments or seeing kids doing the same things that I did. Just like, oh, you'll, you'll figure just it like out. like our sons, they do some workout videos on, off of Uh-oh. YouTube. They try to do what we do because they watch us and... Man, my son, our youngest, the next day was crying and and kept complaining, and we we're like, "Buddy, you're just really sore." Yeah, they had like little body weight exercise videos on YouTube, like exercise tutorial for body weight, and they did like eight or nine of these videos in a row. Kept we, telling them you're gonna be sore. They're like, "We're yeah, good. We don't we feel nothing." It. Yeah, and then the next day he was like, oh, I hurt. Did, "Didn't want to go to school, poor yeah. baby." Didn't want to work. Didn't want to move. Didn't want to do nothing. Just sat there and cried and stuff. It was like, "Yeah, buddy." Welcome to the suck, but but I think that's going to be it for me on this one. Did you guys have any other stories or anything else y'all kind of want to bring up or talk about? I'm good right now. No, sir. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate you guys tuning back in and checking us out and watching the video. If you made it this far, if you could go ahead and leave a like, we'd appreciate it. And let's be honest, if you have made it this far in the video, you should probably just go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. And tune in next time, which will be tomorrow. We appreciate y'all watching. Bye. Later.